go woke, go broke, the DIY chain Wix raised a few eyebrows by displaying this sign emblazoned for my radio listeners with the phrase, no LGB without the T, during an appearance at Brighton Pride, which returned following a two-year hiatus because, of course, the pandemic. Now, while many praised them for becoming a, a trans ally and a Stonewall champion, non-trans members of the LGBT community accused Wicks of tarring all LGBT people with the same brush and dictating to them who they should align themselves with. Well, joining me to discuss this is the Reverend Calvin Robinson and the LGBTQ activist Peter Tatchell. Peter, I assume you welcomed the intervention of Wix and you probably quite like this kind of, of entry into the debate. Well, of course, I think it's great that Wix does affirm its commitment to LGBT plus equality. Uh, it makes good business sense. Roughly about 10% of all employees in Britain are lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender. And it's the interest of businesses that they retain them that they make those employees feel welcome. We know from the research that's done that where workplaces are welcoming, those employees give extra effort. They are committed to their companies, their productivity is higher, their involvement in the company and their success contribution towards the success of the company is better. So it does make economic and business sense. And I think it's also, it is good that a big company does signal that it doesn't discriminate, that it welcomes everyone. And I think that's somebody, something that everyone should, should, should be applauding because discrimination is not compatible with British values. Calvin Robinson, when I think of Wix, when I think of home improvements, you know, I don't think, I don't go in there expecting to be discriminated against, right? I go in there seeking home improvement, not a lecture on the latest identity politics crusade. I know, it's sad. I think Peter's conflating many issues there. He's talking about being welcoming to the workforce, but what Wix is doing here is quite clearly advertising a campaign to their buyers, to the people that are just going in to buy a colour of paint, not necessarily looking for a lecture on societal norms or sexuality. And what I found interesting about the Wix campaign is that it's saying you cannot be in favour or supportive of LGB without being in favour or supportive of the T. And I think that's disingenuous too, because uh, that is discriminatory. If you are in favour of people of all sexualities uh, expressing that sexuality, that has absolutely nothing to do with someone wanting to change gender or, or, sex, or changing their sex. That is a debate that is very contested, very hot and heavy right now, has not been settled. And that's so different from the LGB argument of wanting equality in the workforce and in the rest of society. Yeah. And then, Peter, I've told you this before. You know, I'm very grateful to the activism that you've been part of in the past, where you have actually ensured that we have equality in the eyes of the law and wider society as far as gay men and women are concerned and bisexual men and women. But I'm wondering, how does the the issue of gender dysphoria of someone saying, look, I have gender dysphoria. It's a very debilitating thing to experience. My heart goes out to people that are genuinely experiencing that. But, Peter, I don't understand how the T is the same as the LGB, because one's sexual orientation and another is a gender dysphoria, a, a real issue that needs to be addressed. In fact, that's quite dangerous because it's mixing up a mental health issue with a sexuality. Well, there is a difference between lesbian, gay and bisexual and trans. You know, one is about sexual orientation. The other is about gender identity. But both experience very similar or have historically experienced very similar levels of discrimination and hate crime. Now, lesbian, gay and bisexual people have made huge advances. Um, trans people have somewhat been left behind. And I think we just, as a gesture of solidarity, we want to support our trans siblings. And again, going back to the business argument, there will be employees in Wix who are trans. There will be customers of Wix who are trans. Obviously, the business wants to make them all feel welcome. And that's just common sense. It's not saying that people should endorse it. It's just saying that they as a company endorse the principle of inclusion and equality for LGBT people. And that includes, of course, the T. You know, they're, they're, they're saying they don't want to exclude trans people. And I think that's a lovely, warm-hearted, generous, kind message. You know, I'm all in favor of loving others, supporting others, ending discrimination. 
I don't want to see discrimination against trans people. We know they do suffer prejudice and discrimination. I think it's fantastic that a company says we don't support discrimination. But Peter, this, this t trans movement is actually discriminatory towards women and women's rights. And this is why it's such a hot contested issue at the moment, because people are fighting to protect women's spaces, female only spaces. And this is therefore a political statement by Wix. It's not inclusion. It's not diversity. It's a political statement that is going to put a lot of people off. So I don't think it does make financial sense, actually. I think it's actually counterproductive to their business. It's a social lecture. It's social justice warrior. Uh, and it's been taken up by the LGBT plus movement with in Wix. It's not actually by the corporate body. And Peter, before you answer that, I'm just wondering, the other banner that Wix had on, on their floor there was the, the, they're looking to ban all forms of what they call conversion therapy. Now, this would actually stop someone like Calvin in his ministry from having a conversation with somebody about issues like gender identity and other forms of, of, of conversation, frankly, of prayer, of all of these other things. Do you support that as someone who believes passionately in freedom of speech? Well, the proposed legislation would not ban conversations. It would ban attempts to change someone's sexual orientation or their gender identity. And that we know, according to all the medical, psychiatric and counseling organizations, is very, very harmful. It's not only unethical, it's not only damaging, it doesn't work, but it does cause the victims immense psychological and emotional damage. We know that the rates of self-harm, depression, and anxiety among people who've been subjected to conversion therapy is astronomically high. I had a friend who went through conversion therapy some years ago. It made him suicidal. Now he can't even have a functioning relationship, emotionally or sexually. It's caused him that much damage. And that's why all the professional bodies say it is unethical, dangerous and wrong. I mean, I can't argue against your personal anecdote, which is probably why you used it. But what you said about all psychologists and all professional bodies saying that this is, inc is actually incorrect, because what we're seeing is a lot of companies are saying, if you ban conversion therapy under the current legislation, it will prevent many, many therapists and pastors and priests from having genuine conversations with people who are exploring themselves and their identity, not about turning people away from, from becoming trans if that's what they want, but about having an engaging conversation and helping and supporting and encouraging people where necessary. People will be put off from that because there will be lawsuits. People will, therapists will no longer be able to have conversations that are open and honest. Therefore, they'll stop taking on board clients. And priests and vicars and deacons like myself will not be able to have conversations with people because we'll be under threat of prosecution from simply sitting down and talking with them. It's disingenuous to say that that's not the case. And I don't see what the point of it is because we, all we're hearing so far is we're, we're trying to stop um, persecution, we're trying to stop oppression. The LGBT plus community is not oppressed. In fact, as a straight man, I feel more oppressed than most of my gay friends at the moment because Pride Day became Pride Month. Pride Month is in, what, June? We're now in August. Pride is still going on in London as you walk about. Everywhere you go, it's overly affirming the LGBT community. Everywhere you go, it's no longer oppressed. It's now, we've overreached. There was a fight for equality, which was important. I'll grant you that. But we've gone past that. There was no criteria to say, when we've met this, what do we do next? He's Tatchell. Kelvin, you are factually wrong. Even today, one third of all LGBT plus people in this country have been victims of hate crime because of their sexuality or gender identity. That's one third, nearly a million people. Define I have crime, friends of mine who have been beaten up just on the eve of the first of the London Pride uh, in, at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of July. Um, two friends of mine were beaten up by thugs as they left a gay club in South London. When it comes to our schools, nearly half of all LGBT plus kids in our schools have been victims of bullying, again, because of their sexuality or gender identity. So, so to say that it's all over and we've won this battle, no, yeah, no, we no. have made great... The battle for equality is not over. over. Because and, and to say that we're not... There is what still you do, not Peter, is you very cleverly mix up stats. The vast majority of young people have been bullied in school for any reason, sex, sexuality, gender... Uh, race, whatever. Kids are bullied, and that's something we need to work on and stamp out, absolutely. But to conflate those facts and to use those facts to your argument to suggest that there is still a fight for equality is wrong. What kind of equality under the law do you not have as an LGBTQ++ person in this country? Well, for example, under the equality laws, religious organisations, including faith-run schools, hospitals, um, shelters for the homeless, 
are allowed in certain circumstances to discriminate against LGBT plus people. That is written into our equality laws. Why should so, faith So are you saying that people should not be able to adhere to their faith? Because my, in my faith, marriage is between one, one man and one woman united under God. And that is a discrimination under law that is protected because it's part of the faith. Are you saying we should undermine faith in this country and say that actually you're no longer allowed to pr practice Christianity, Islam, uh, no, Hinduism, this and Judaism? It's not about faith organisations. It's not about faith organisations. A church-run uh, hostel for homeless people or a church-run nursing home is in what, allowed in what way in would a nursing home or a hostel discriminate let me, against someone? Let me, finish, let me finish, please. In certain circumstances, they are allowed to refuse to care for an LGBT plus person. That is written into the law. It's not about faith organizations uh, practicing their faith. It's about faith that's, run that's nonsense. schools. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that is absolute nonsense. No care facility in this country is allowed to discriminate on someone due to their immutable characteristics. We have laws to protect against that. The Equalities Act is one of them. And it, written into it says there are qualified exemptions for religious organisations. OK, we'll, we'll disagree on that one. But I, I wonder, Peter, I want to ask you about these, this revelation by Guido Fawkes, the political blog that found that HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, is spending over a million quid a year on taxpayers' money on diversity and inclusion offices. I'm wondering, Peter, a lot of my audience are saying, well, hang on a minute, Darren, we're in a generation-defining cost-of-living crisis, inflation like you wouldn't believe. Is this really the right use of taxpayer cash? What say you, Peter? Well, £1 million out of the HMRC, HMRC budget is very, very, very tiny. And again, the purpose is, is to overcome historic discriminations and disadvantages that certain groups face. And I think everybody who wants a kinder, gentler society should welcome that. We want to get to a situation where we won't need to spend this money, where everyone will feel welcome and included, where everyone will be treated equally, where disadvantage, historic disadvantage, will be overcome. That's the purpose of this kind of spending. And it is really very, very tiny, considering the large and massive HMRC budget. So, Calvin Robinson, are these diversity and inclusion managers that one million quid, is that a good use of taxpayer cash? Absolutely not. It's a complete waste of our money. Three million pounds been spent since 2019 on these people that are just splashing it around, painting rainbows here, there and everywhere. And it's not about making people feel more welcome at all. When your entire department is almost pressured into putting your, their pronouns on their email signatures, as just a, a lame example, the people that don't want to say my, what their pronouns are because they think they're obvious and everyone can see their pronouns by their name or by knowing them, then they feel left out. They don't feel welcome. So what we're doing is we're flipping the whole thing around. We're not making people more welcome. We're, we're making one demographic more welcome than others. And that is not equality. That is not diversity. And it's not inclusion. Calvin, I just want to ask well, you about the... Is anybody being forced to use pronouns? That, that As I said, wrong. pressure. That is I didn't say force. Don't twist my words. I said, if you pressure a whole group of people to use pronouns, the ones that don't want to use them are going to feel like they're doing something wrong. And you know that to be the case. Well, I said, I, I, don't, I don't support anyone being forced or pressured. It should be optional. It's but that's what these programs do. Choice. Unconscious bias training is another example that has been debunked. Does not work. A lot of this money from diversity and inclusion and equality officers goes on to giving people unconscious bias training, telling people that they're either overtly racist or covertly racist. These things that they cannot overcome. It's just the way that they're born if they happen to be white. These are harmful, divisive, toxic ideologies that should be nowhere near any public body. And the fact that we are paying, you and I are paying good money to make it happen is disgusting. Peter I Tatchell, don't think final that brief word. In, in most cases, I, I, I would oppose it. I don't think it does happen in most cases, but there, I'm sure there are some examples. And you know, we do have to uh, create a culture of equality and inclusion in a way that doesn't exclude people or make people feel bad about themselves. This is not about revenge. It's not about making people feel guilty. It's about making people feel embracing and inclusive of others, so that we can all live together in a harmonious kind and gentle society. OK, we'll have to leave it there, folks, and agree to disagree. That was the Reverend Calvin Robinson and the LGBTQ activist Peter Tatchell. I thank both of them for their contribution.